We're going to cover XOR in this video, which is short for exclusive OR. So the X comes from the X in the second letter of exclusive. It's also called exclusive disjunction if you want to show off and sound really fancy. OR is called disjunction, again, in a slightly fancier way. But calling it XOR or exclusive OR is how most people refer to it. Now make sure you know what and OR and NOT are because XOR is a slightly modified version of OR in particular. Now the way XOR works is it will return true if exactly one input is true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. Now let me show you the truth table for XOR to maybe illustrate this a little bit more. So I'm using zeros and ones in this truth table. I could equally be using false for zero and true for one. Now the truth table is showing every combination of XOR. So if A and B are the inputs, if I, if I show the logic gate here, if A and B are the inputs, Q is our output in this truth table. So you can see we only get one outputted, we only get true outputted when the inputs are different. I've got exactly one input being true in this case. A normal OR would have one, one, one here. When it's one or one, you'd get one. But with XOR, one, XOR one is zero. And to reflect this, the XOR gate as a logic gate, the symbol is just the OR symbol with an extra line at the back to make it look different. So we've kind of got a go faster stripe at the back to make it an XOR, not an OR. Now XOR exists because actually the regular Boolean OR doesn't really reflect how OR is used in normal English. If I said to you, do you want a pizza or a burger for dinner? I don't mean pick both, right? which is what Boolean OR would allow. So Boolean XOR is where it's really either OR. You've only got one choice out of the two, you've got to pick one of them for it to be true. When you've got no inputs being true, it does return zero like you would probably expect. Now just on how you would write out this, you can just go say A XOR B equals Q, where A and B are our input variables and Q is our output variable. The letters aren't very important, but you often see those three. But the slightly more interesting looking one is where we have an XOR symbol which is really a circle with a plus in the middle of it that is representing XOR. If you remember OR can also be represented with a plus and so we've got a plus just of a circle around it to distinguish it from regular OR. Now hopefully that was clear but let's look at a example of how this might get applied in real life context. So we need to following the scenario give the expression, draw a circuit, and draw the truth table. And the scenario is, a customer is only eligible for a three pound meal deal if they select either pasta or a sandwich, as well as a drink. Starting with our Boolean expression, let's assign some variables for the key parts of this. Now, the outcome here, the output, is whether a customer gets a meal deal. Let's give that the letter M, not that that's important. So that's the outcome. Either they get a meal deal or they don't. That's true or false. Well, what other Boolean conditions do we have here? Well, they get either pasta or a sandwich. So they either have pasta or they don't. They either have a sandwich or they don't. Let's give pasta P and sandwich S. As well as a drink. A drink is another Boolean property. Either they have a drink or they don't. Let's give that D. So how can we combine this in our Boolean expression? Well, you only get M, the output, if you get a drink. So as well as is a clue that you need to have it, which suggests it's going to be an AND operator. So you get a drink and what else? It's either pasta or a sandwich. Now, we've got OR here, but we've also got either. Now you're thinking, is it going to be XOR or is it going to be OR? Well, when it's either or, that means you can't have both. And that wouldn't make sense, right? If you're stood in Tesco's trying to buy both pasta and a sandwich for your three pounds, it wouldn't go down well, right? You only get one or the other. So it's got to be XOR. And I'm going to put this in brackets because I need to deal with that first before I deal with the drink. So P and the XOR symbol is a plus with a circle around it. P, XOR, S. That is my Boolean expression. Let's then draw the logic circuit using the logic gates, also called a logic diagram. So we've got three inputs. I've got the drink, I've got pasta and sandwich. So 
Things in brackets we always deal with first. So let's connect up P and S using XOR. Well, XOR, in terms of its logic gate, is just OR, but with a extra line at the back, extra curve at the back, I suppose. Then you connect up your two inputs to this gate, and we have one output coming out. Now, the next thing to do is connect up the drink and the output. I'm using AND between those two. So let's do that and stick an AND gate between them. So an AND gate has a flat back. And then connect up our inputs. But the other input is from the result of XOR. And then this leads to M. So that is our logic circuit for this problem. To do the truth table, we're thinking about what are our variables. Well, I've got D. I have got P, I've got S, and I've got M in my answer here. If I leave a gap here, let's also do another column for P, X, or S, because that requires a bit more thought, I suppose. Now, when you're doing a truth table yourself, you need to make sure you get every combination of the inputs. And so I'd recommend starting counting at zero and add one each time. So that's zero in binary, one in binary is this, two in binary is this, three and binaries this, and so on and so on. You should have eight rows in your truth table if you have three inputs. It's because two to the power three is eight. And now let's do this XOR column. So P XOR S, zero XOR zero is zero. Zero XOR one is one. One XOR zero is one. But one XOR one is not one, like all would be, it's a zero. Zero XOR zero, zero, one, one and then one x or one again is actually zero then for m i need to do p x or s and d so i'm looking at my first column and the second last column zero and zero zero and in fact all of these are going to be zero while i've got zeros on the left because the and needs both sides to be true i've got one and zero is also zero but one and one is one one and one is one but one and zero is zero so I've only got two ones in my final column, and you can check this makes sense because I've got two drinks here. You need to have a drink as per this example, and we've got only pasta here and not the sandwich. And we've got only a sandwich here and not pasta, so it does work out. And rightly, when you get all three, you don't get a meal deal because that's too expensive. So XOR is either or. Can't have two ones, that results in a zero.